Ramaka Katoch, welcome to Sip and Snip. Hi, Joshua. Thanks for having me here. How are you, first of all? I'm good. How are you? I think I'm good, but then all morning I have been listening to Lana Del Rey, so make of that what you will. Um, thank you for joining me today. You are our Audit Transformation Manager here at Data Center. Uh, can you tell me about yourself and your role within Data Center and what you do on a day to day or month to month? So I'm an audit transformation manager here at Data Snipper. I'm part of the innovation services team. Uh, and our job is essentially to make sure that all of the clients are equipped to use the tool as flexibly and as comfortably as they can. Um, we also work with the sales teams to um, help prospects understand the value that Data Snipper brings in their field of work. So that's essentially my job description. You, you worked in an uh, in audit before. Mm -hmm. like, what did you do there? Um, so I started my career in audit as a risk and compliance analyst and then worked for about five and a half years, worked my way up to a DM. Um, but essentially my role was conducting internal audits, conducting internal control reviews, risk assessment reviews, ERM, SOP reviews, special projects, a couple of IT forensic reviews. So a lot of different variations in the risk advisory space. So now we're here today to talk about talent retention. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just going to start off. How big is this issue within audit? It's one of the biggest challenges that currently the big four is facing and has been facing historically. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's an ongoing issue. Let's not dive into this too deeply now because we can discuss this later, but what causes it? Um, is, is the idea of the role different from what the actual role is? Talent retention seems to be an issue with younger people from what I've sort of deduced. So. It's always been a historical issue because the market's always changing. Yeah. People's expectations are always changing. Um, but what causes it is because there is an intense competition between the big fours, between the peers that are working there. Okay. Um, it's a very, very stressful job. You are working on really strict timelines. Um, there's a lot of travel involved. You're working on back-to-back -back engagements. You're working 12, 14 hours yeah. a day. Um, and there tends to also be a lot of monotony that sets into your role. So I think at a high level, all of this... Um, causes a challenge in um, retaining talent. Is the idea of the role different? Personally, for me, it was. when yeah. I was very young when I started and I I went in thinking that I'm just going to change the life of my first client. I'm going to, in one audit, tell them what they're doing wrong and just improve everything about their work mm -hmm. and then move on to my next audit. So I thought I was going to be an amazing, uh, you know, auditor just changing and transforming lives. But in re reality, uh, I was just sitting in front of an Excel and trying to understand their data, trying yeah. to understand their processes, trying to make sense of the information in front of me and trying to get some really nice, good quality review uh, issues out of my review um, and then just running to the next engagement and doing the same thing again. So quite a difference in what I thought I was getting into yeah. versus what it was. And that, I mean, Yusuf said that he technically still works in audit. Do you feel the same way, I guess? But um, is that is are these the reasons that you pivoted away to approach audit in from a more tech perspective? Um, yeah, I think I still do work in audit and I think I'm lucky to be able to do so. I do feel that right now I'm still doing that and I'm doing that in a more... Uh, nuanced way yeah, in a way sure. that actually brings in that change uh, makes people's lives better um, so yeah I, I do think that I'm still working in audit and within your like your firm and within your experience uh, did you see former colleagues also making similar steps in terms of moving away from the traditional elements of audit to something more nuanced as you said um, so my reasons for leaving were that that monotony that had set in, uh, I was getting in and out of busy seasons constantly and just it just felt like the whole year was a busy season for me. Yeah. Um, there was a lot of travel and my work-life balance had gone for a toss. Um, so I thought that I'm putting in so much, but it's still not driving the value that I want to. It's not challenging me anymore in ways that I want my work to. Uh, and that's why I stepped away from it. And a lot of us were young. We were all at the same age group. 
Um, so people left because people either wanted a more stable work environment, people wanted a more uh, a, a better work life balance. So they joined industry roles. Uh, people went for higher education because this thought that okay, if you're at a higher position, then you make a difference there. Uh, essentially, you all come in from a place of trying to make different uh, a difference. Mm -hmm. When you're not able to do it, then you all obviously step away from audit. I mean, a lot of people who've gone the traditional way still have just gone back to come internal audit departments of companies wherein they're not running from engagement to engagement. They're actually focusing on developing the internal controls, developing the framework of that particular company that they're a part of. So I think it all stems from there. The roots can be different. Okay. Um, but yeah, eventually people do step away from yeah. it. And th there you mentioned busy season, and I'm not an auditor, don't have a history in it, but from what I have learned about busy season, it wouldn't surprise me if the intensity of those seasons um, caused a spike in, in people sort of looking elsewhere. Is there any truth to that statement? People do, I mean, I think people do resign after the busy season or maybe year end. Uh, you would see a lot of resignations coming in after that. Uh, because during the busy season, you don't have the time or the opportunity to do it. Yeah. Um, you don't have the flexibility or the option to do it. So you just mentioned busy season. Um, and uh, I don't have the most extensive experience within audit. But after busy season would seem like a time to me where you would see a spike in people walking away from the profession just because of the nature of how stressful and how intense that period is. Is there any truth to that thought? Yeah, I think there is. Um, you'll see the majority of resignations come in post the busy season or um, once your year-end reviews, whatever, are done. Um, and I think that is because of the way busy season completely drains you. Like we, we need to understand what busy season is. We, as auditors, go in, start in the busy season in Jan and come out in April and May. And those four, five months are you working really long hours like you're working 12 14 hours you're working six days a week you're traveling to clients locations you're you start your day with a laptop you end your day on a screen i mean and then yeah. you do the same thing again so there is this constant pressure to meet those deadlines there's this constant you're maybe working on two engagements at a time and that's added pressure so you're you're dealing with two different clients you're dealing with two different reviews um you're also trying to uh, not make mistakes because you're an auditor, you you don't have the uh, liberty of making mistakes. You need to make sure your work is uh, the best quality. Your reports need to go out by year end. So uh, busy season, I think now we've just termed everything to be a busy season, but this season is quite heavy, quite demanding on auditors. And when you're yeah. in it, you're in it. You don't have the option of getting out of it. And um, there are companies who that have three months of notice period. So they make sure that you do finish your busy season. I mean, you get, get done with it. And once you get out of it and you're away from it and you look at it from like a different perspective, yeah. you realize that those three months have just gone away and you don't know anything about your life. You've, you've had zero work-life balance. Um, all you've done is just meet deadlines, finish, deliver reports, done data analysis, and that's all mm -hmm. you've done. So that's when people really get get out of it and they, you know, take a stock of the situation and try to understand that, okay, how do we proceed from here? Because this is not a sustainable way of progressing in your career. My personal example was, was very similar. Like I came out of it and I thought that, okay, we... We, I know what I want. I yeah. want a client facing role. I, I I know that I want to be challenged, but I want to be challenged in a way uh, where I'm actually going out and solving problems and yeah. making an impact, but I'm not doing any of that. And I have no work-life balance. I have no flexibility. So this is not the way that I can proceed. And yeah. um, that's when you'll see a lot of people putting down their papers. That makes sense. I think busy season is almost like a barometer for solutions like ours to to determine how successful we are yeah. we can improve the quality of life in these aspects of the role that's where i think we can we can say we've been successful yeah and on that i've got a bit of a pre-planned um statement here mm -hmm. so too often we accuse gen z and gen alpha of having short attention spans but could we flip this statement on its head and accuse boomers and zoomers of being inefficient and afraid of change so of how true is the statement if you don't employ an innovative, forward-thinking approach to audit, 
you're going to continue suffering with tunnel retention. That's absolutely true. And uh, I think, again, that has been one of the main reasons why historically these companies have uh, faced talent retention issues. Um, we need to understand what young people essentially want from their job. I mean, the the aim is not to, you know, uh, slog for hours and hours just to get a paycheck. The aim is to uh, have a healthy work-life balance, do meaningful work, and also have a life after work. Yeah. And I don't think um, young professionals are wrong in demanding that. Yeah. Um, so I think to the credit of boomers and zoomers though, um, post-COVID you do see a lot of change in, in this. You, you do see uh, a change in the way of working. I mean, pre-COVID auditors had to go to each and every client location. Yeah. You were on field five, six days a week. You were working uh, six days a week. And uh, once COVID came in, you realize that hybrid work is a possibility. You yeah. realize that you could leverage on technology. You figured out ways of, you know, sending data across. You figured out ways of conducting audits online. Your work didn't stop, mm -hmm. but you just came up with a, a more tech-friendly way, a more employee-friendly way of working because you were put in that position. Yeah. So I don't think it should be that you should be, you know, put in that position to make that change. If that change was brought in earlier, you may had ha have had, you know, better successes with retaining talent. But when COVID came into play, uh, a lot of firms did realize that we need to adopt technology. We we need to make a change in the way that we're working, in the way that we're conducting audits. Yeah. Otherwise, you're not going to sustain. You can't. You can't just stop shop, right? You can't. You can't just be like, okay, we have the coronavirus going on. Nobody's going to go, and we're not going yeah. to conduct any audits for two years. Uh, so you did figure out a way. You did uh, enable that. You did allow your employees to stay at home, complete their reviews, and also do a good job. So um, I think that COVID was a big reason why that happened, um, and now. I, I do see a lot of technology uh, uh, companies investing in these technologies and I think a lot of work needs to be done, yeah. but at least we've started. Yeah, the show must go on. Yeah. Yes. Um, uh, we, we mentioned the the solutions, uh, data snippet being one of them. Uh, let's dive into that. How, how are firms solving the problem of talent retention? So you've said since COVID, there has been a shift. What have we seen shifted? I think uh, there has been a lot of uh, adoption of uh, newer softwares, uh, newer tech wherein you are able to access clients' data, you're able to communicate with clients. It can be as easy as like a Zoom or a Microsoft Teams, but you also see a lot of uh, focus on that. Yeah. Um, you, you see a lot of focus on bringing in newer softwares that have integrations with your ERPs. Um, you have firms heavily investing into this kind of R&D um, and, you know, keeping a lookout not only within their network, but also with the clients that they're working with. So they're trying mm -hmm. to push down that technology um, across their industries. And I think that's that's what's changing. And I think it's it's a good good step to take. Before we sat down here off camera, you spoke about the importance of uh, listening to auditors and what they need, which I really liked your passion behind that. You also mentioned it earlier during the podcast. So if you were running a firm, is that something that you would adopt? Is that something you would change? To retain talent? Yes. Um, yeah, like it's a simple two-step approach, right? Uh, technology being innovative with your processes is one thing. But again, that is derived out of your need to conduct better reviews. And that when you conduct better reviews, you're also enabling and empowering your uh, employees um, in two ways. So... You can empower them with technology, which is one way I would definitely approach it mm -hmm. uh, because you're freeing up that time for them. You're, you're letting them get rid of the mundane tasks and actually focus on things that they would find challenging. And that would be an immediate motivator for them to come mm -hmm. to work. And uh, secondly, all of these changes, all of these policies come in from actually listening to your employees, actually understanding why if you've historically faced a challenge of retaining talent, then you need to understand why the talent doesn't stay. Um, you need to understand what are their challenges. You need to have policies which are employee friendly. And for that, you need to trust your employees. Yeah. So listening to them, trusting them and empowering them is, I think, a, a major shift um, 
in perspectives of how companies deal with their employees and the more and more you do that you empower them and you trust them yeah. um i think you are successful in retaining talent i couldn't agree more i've got a question specifically about technology so the 9 to 9 mentality as you said 12 to 14 hour days um it's enough to put anybody off especially uh, in an age where young people are considering their work life balance more it's it's having a bigger impact on their decision making when they're choosing their careers can technology like data snipper or other solutions actually um, have an impact on the work-life balance and thus improve talent retention? I, I think so. Yes, I mean that's one of the biggest reasons why I joined um, data snipper and my entire team is made of ex auditors. Yeah. Um, and you, if you come and work in our team, you actually do see a lot of passion. Um, in engaging with auditors, all of our clients are either financial professionals or auditors, and we really help we want to help them and when we take our technology to them and they come come and tell us this used to take three people two days to do it and now it takes one person half a day to do it i mean that's the kind of impact we're having yeah and right at such a granular level um you're helping each and every junior auditor you're helping each and every reviewer and that cumulatively solves a lot of time saving challenge a uh, time time issues right you end up saving so much time for them and when you save this time, yes, in a numbers perspective, you've you've saved up that cost. But uh, at an employee perspective, you freed up this time for them. They yeah. have an option of ending their day on time. They have an option of focusing on other things. They have an option of doing another task, which had to be gotten to maybe by the end of the week. Now they can do it, get to it much faster. Yeah. Um, so I think technology is a big, big enabler, especially in audit, which is seen to be such an outdated profession. And I think we're finally catching up um, and revolutionizing it. It's good to hear. It motivates me as well, speaking to you guys, because I don't think anybody should have an unhealthy work-life balance in, in any role. So to to directly improve that for me is, yeah, it, it motivates me to yep. do what I do as well. So it filters down. Uh, specifically on Data Snipper, when you first saw Data Snipper, what were you thinking as in with your audit hat on? Uh, it was quite funny, actually. I I, uh, I scrolled through uh, LinkedIn and I saw this role that said Audit Transformation Manager. And for me to see the words audit and transformation together was just very intriguing. I was very intrigued. Um, and I saw the job description. I thankfully met uh, the job description criteria. So I applied for it. And when I actually went on the website, I saw the product, I saw the tool. My first thought was, why did I not have it? Why the hell did I not have this? And if I had it, uh, I would have I would have loved my job even more because like I wouldn't spend so much time doing all of this data yeah. testing, which now I don't need to. Um, and even when we were giving our assessments and uh, speaking about the role, uh, I was amazed at the speed and the efficiency. I mean, we talk about it so much, but it really does bring so much speed and efficiency in our audits. And you still see that excitement in that role. I'm really happy to be in this role. Um, even now, when we talk to clients about it, it it's so interesting yeah. to always you know, tell them that, hey, there is a solution wherein you don't need to spend four hours on something. You just need 15 minutes. Do you feel that buzz? When do you, do you see that eureka moment, that penny drop moment when you're giving demos through through Zoom or whatever? Uh, yeah, I think we feel, I, I feel it more when we're um, reaching out to prospects or when sales involves us in any of their calls. And, uh, you know, we try to understand from a client's perspective, what are they doing? So we just understand, okay, what's the review that you're doing? And tell me the procedure to do it. And they'll say that, uh, I extract the information, I put it into Excel, and then I type it into PowerPoint, I do all of this. And then you actually tell them that, okay, you can do data snipper and you can completely eliminate steps one and two. Mm -hmm. So you can directly do all of this and you can do this. And when you s show them the working with their own work papers and you actually see this entire thing transform, uh, you see that change on their face. Uh, it's really nice. I mean, there's so much excitement and yeah. every client is different. So you're sitting with them, you're brainstorming solutions with them. Yeah. So that synergy and that excitement is, is really nice. And I think that's what pushes client, clients as well um, because they know that this is a product that is built for them. This is mm -hmm. a product wherein we as ex-auditors are trying to help them. Uh, we understand their challenges and we're yeah. still sitting 
and focusing on their challenges to the most granular level and implementing the tool there. Um, so you do see and the, the, the happiness on their faces and I think uh, that's, it's re- that's the best part of our job. Yeah, I was going to ask about um, features or use cases, but I think you've kind of answered that by saying that each case is, is, is different, which I think is really exciting. There are many ways in which um, that happiness, many use cases, many features that, that have a different impact on, you know, different issue. Um, those are actually all my questions, Ramika. Okay. So this was a pleasure. I've um, enjoyed learning a lot from you about talent retention, work-life balance and all these things. So thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me, Josh. You're welcome. I've been Joshua Namdi Gugwan. They've been Wamaka Katoch. And this has been Sip and Snip. <laughs>